Imagine a world where the Maple Leafs were in Edmonton and the Oilers were in Toronto, highlighted by Wayne Gretzky, who would later become a member of the Saskatoon Saskatchewan Blues. Yeah, that could have happened. We'll be talking about a handful of NHL teams that almost relocated for some pretty bizarre reasons. Let's start off in 1976, the year when Emile the Cat Francis was hired as executive president, GM, and coach of the St. Louis Blues. Unfortunately, his tenure wouldn't last very long thus causing him to sell the team a year later in 1977 to Ralston chairman R. Hal Dean. Now, what is Ralston? Well, Ralston short for Ralston Purina, the dog food company that was only supposed to be a temporary owner until a suitor in St. Louis would buy the team. But when Dean retired in 1981, Ralston's new chairman, William Stritz, wanted to solely focus on the dog food company, viewing the blues as almost a burden. So Stritz, due to the blues losing him up to $10 million in six years, decided to sell the team, announcing on January 12, 1983, that he had received a purchase from a Saskatchewan-based company the Tony Hunter Enterprise, and if the name Hunter sounds familiar, well, it's none other than Bill Hunter, one of the founding members of the WHA. His goal was to purchase the Blues and move them to Saskatoon, even claiming that his group was ready to build an arena that would be completed in time for the 83-84 season. The fans were stunned, and so were the players, who were actually notified about this potential move a month before Stritz made the public announcement, which obviously didn't go over well, as because of the news, the team's on-ice performance would crumble, causing them to become one of the bottom teams in the NHL. The move to Saskatoon seemed officially underway that offseason, and all Hunter needed was approval from the NHL and they would be Saskatchewan bound. Except, the NHL told them no, and Hunter and his gang didn't like that at all. The NHL didn't want to move to a small Canadian market, and the dog food company would get in a heated legal battle with the league, threatening to destroy the team in the process, claiming they would sell everyone on the team off to other NHL teams, and stated they wouldn't participate in the upcoming 1983 draft, which they didn't, becoming the first and only team to ever forfeit the NHL draft, not picking in a single round. The situation got so bad that the NHL would force themselves to take over operations until they could find a buyer interested in keeping the team in St. Louis. They set a deadline to do so, and if no one bought the team, they would dissolve the franchise. Luckily for the Blues and their fans, 10 days before the deadline, Harry Ornis swooped in and bought the team, keeping them where they're at today. What's crazy, however, is that the Blues were literally inches away from actually moving to Saskatoon. They even had newspaper articles and jerseys made, officially announcing the move. But thanks to Harry Ornis and the NHL's unwillingness to move the team, the Blues are where they're at today. Well, now what about the whole Edmonton Leafs Toronto Oilers thing that I brought up earlier? For that, we need to go to 1981. While the Blues were about to go through their relocation scare, two more teams almost joined them in moving. And this actually comes from former Oilers owner Peter Pocklington's book titled I'd Trade Him Again, where in it, he mentions how the Oilers and Maple Leafs were extremely close to trading cities. And this was all thanks to Leafs owner Harold Ballard being in a bit of financial trouble. In an act of desperation, he would give Peter a call proposing the deal. Pocklington remembers the call, stating, quote, Harold phoned me and said, quote, would you consider moving to Toronto with your team, and I'll move to Edmonton with mine, and I'll also need $50 million, to which Pocklington agreed, also mentioning, quote, I did the numbers, and I would have made a fortune in Toronto, but a week later, Harold Ballard would call back, stating that he solved his financial issues and that both teams could stay where they're at, being kind of a letdown for Pocklington. But regardless, this move seems bizarre for a handful of reasons from both teams' perspectives. Actually, 
when thinking about it, Pocklington could have maybe lost this deal. At the time, the Oilers were a new franchise in the NHL, and Edmonton was ranked first in league attendance in a brand new arena. If the team went to Toronto, they would play in an arena over 50 years old with less seating than Edmonton and maybe less success, as who knows if the Oilers have the success they did in Toronto. The only upside is that marketing Wayne Gretzky in one of the league's biggest markets would be extremely beneficial business-wise. So, who knows what could have happened, but it's definitely one of the weirdest scenarios that almost could have happened. For the last section of the video, we'll be focusing on one man, Jim Bolsilli, as this dude refused to take no for an answer. Bolsilli, the owner of BlackBerry, was determined to bring an NHL franchise to Hamilton, and tried to buy three different NHL teams in order to do so, being unsuccessful in all three of his attempts. His first victim were the Pittsburgh Penguins, who at the time were in a terrible financial state. The Pens were looking to leave their ancient arena in hopes of a new one, and Jim jumped on the opportunity to do so in Hamilton. At first, he agreed to buy the team in 2006, promising to keep them in Pittsburgh, but if he failed to get a new arena deal, then he could be free to relocate them wherever. Well, the deal fell apart because Balsilli wouldn't be able to move the team. Luckily for the Penguins, however, Super Mario would play hero yet again, deciding not to finalize a deal with the Blackberry owner, keeping ownership of the Penguins and eventually coming to a new arena deal in 2007. One down, two to go, as Jim really wanted a team in Hamilton. So in 2007, he decided to buy the Nashville Predators. When Predators owner Craig Leopold put the team up for sale, Balsilli agreed to purchase the team in hopes of moving them, and this time, he tried to get them to Canada by force, running a season ticket campaign which just seemed like something fishy. The tactic took Leopold by surprise and caused him to terminate the deal with Balsilli, selling the team to a group who agreed to keep the team in Nashville. So, Jim tried nicely and then aggressively to get a team in Hamilton. Maybe you'll take the hint and stick to making phones. Nope, let's try the Coyotes. In 2009, Jim tried one last time to get a team in Hamilton, and this time, he got screwed by the Coyotes' own financial issues. He was going to buy the Yotes as the team filed for bankruptcy, but according to NHL Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly, the Coyotes never had permission to file for bankruptcy, making Balsilli unable to purchase the team. And at this point, our guy Jim was fed up throwing a complete fit, stating that the league had some sort of anti-Canadian bias, which prevented him from putting a team in Canada. But even if he wanted to do so, at that point, his entire reputation was ruined due to his poor behavior. As Craig Leopold openly stated, quote, To be blunt, I plan on voting against Jim as a potential owner. I simply don't trust him and don't believe he'd be a good partner in the NHL or owner of an NHL franchise. Ouch. Since we're on the topic of the Coyotes with constant talks of the team potentially moving elsewhere, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to dig up these stories. And there's some stories that I didn't even get to touch up on as well, such as the Islanders potentially being Kansas City bound or Edmonton going to Houston in 1998. But if you ever want to try buying an NHL team in the near future, just don't pull a Jim Ball silly, as your actions will always have consequences and can cost you when you least expect it.